a little more presence.
Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Holy Cross as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. You can find the music for today's Mass on the white sheets at the entrances. You can also find it on the homepage of the Cathedral website at holycrossboston.com. Click the button that says Worship Guide at holycrossboston.com. Our entrance, Antiphon Rorate Celi. Skies, let the just one come forth like the dew. Let him descend from the clouds like the rain. Let the earth open and flower forth a savior.
of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too small to be among the claims of Judea, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruled, ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, and the majestic name of the Lord his God, and they shall remain. For now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. And holocaust and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocaust and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been concentrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <laughs> Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Evangelica dicta de leantra nostra delicta. Good morning, everyone. Monsignor O'Leary, brothers and sisters all, it's a great joy to be able to celebrate this Eucharist with you on the fourth Sunday of Advent. Oftentimes, particularly during this season, 
Children will ask me, they say, are you Santa Claus? Well, I always tell them that uh, I am not, but that Santa Claus was a bishop. And uh, when I studied at a German-American seminary, December the 6th, the Feast of St. Nicholas, was a very important day in our lives. It was the day the Christmas trees went up. We began singing the German Christmas carols and put on a play of the life of St. Nicholas for the German nuns. And uh, So one of the first figures of Advent is Nicholas, who is the first saint in the history of the Catholic Church who was canonized without being a martyr. For the first 300 years of Christianity, the great ideal of sanctity was the men and women who died in the Colosseum or were tortured for their faith, those who died as martyrs. But in the life of Nicholas, it was a life so transformed by his faith and his goodness and his desire to serve particularly those who were suffering and poor, that the church came to recognize a new way that Christians can give witness to our faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, not just by shedding our blood, but by witnessing each day in the way that we respond to the demands of the gospel. So one of the first of the great cast of actors in the drama of Advent is Nicholas. And Isaiah, the prophet, his readings are read almost every day. He lived centuries before Jesus, but he was the prophet of the incarnation. There are maybe 25, 30 prophecies in Isaiah that describe the Messiah so beautifully, even talking about the Messiah as the suffering servant. Other people thought the Messiah would come as a great military liberator. But in Isaiah, we see so many accurate descriptions of what the Messiah was going to be. And he even has that wonderful phrase, behold, A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, Emmanuel, God with us. They once asked Larry King, Larry, if you could interview anybody from history, who would you want to have on your show? And Larry King said, well, that's easy. He said, I would want to have Jesus Christ. They said, well, if Jesus was on your show, what would you ask him? He said, one question. I would ask him, were you born of a virgin? Because the answer to that question defines history. That has defined history for all of us, and that's why we are here, because Jesus is the Son of Man, but also the Son of God. Besides St. Nicholas and Isaiah, John the Baptist is the other big Advent figure, the precursor, the one who's preaching and preparing the people for the coming of the Messiah, calling them to conversion, to a change of heart, to be ready to recognize the Messiah. And then, of course, the great protagonist of Advent, of course, is the Blessed Mother. Her feast on December the 8th, the Immaculate Conception, is God's final preparation for the coming of the Messiah. And today, the gospel on this last Sunday of Advent describes for us the encounter between two pregnant women, Mary and her kinswoman, Elizabeth, both of them waiting for their children to be born, for Jesus and John the Baptist to be born. It's a beautiful portrayal in Luke's gospel today of the second joyful mystery of the rosary, the visitation. Some of you will remember Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was a very popular portrayal of the search for the Ark of the Covenant. Well, in today's gospel, Mary is being presented by St. Luke as mystically the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was that precious treasure chest that Moses 
had made at God's command. And in it, they kept Aaron's rod, the rod that divided the Red Sea, the tablets of the law that M Moses had received on Mount Sinai, and some of the manna, that miraculous bread that came down from heaven. The Ark of the Covenant always accompanied God's people in their sojourn in the desert. And it was the Ark of the Covenant that they carried around the walls of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. Well, Mary is, as we call her in the litany of Loretto, the Ark of the Covenant. She accompanies God's people on our journey. She is that treasure chest. And in today's gospel, the living tabernacle carrying the Christ child within her. And in today's gospel, when she enters Elizabeth's home, Elizabeth says, the child in my womb leapt for joy when he heard your voice. John the Baptist in his mother's womb is already announcing the Messiah, leaping for joy the way that David danced before the Ark of the Covenant. And Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit and she prophesies. She says, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. What familiar words that we say over and over again whenever we pray the Hail Mary. But Elizabeth also, inspired by the Holy Spirit, gives us the very first beatitude in the Gospels. The other beatitudes are in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are the persecuted. But here, Elizabeth gives us the very first beatitude and it's addressed to Mary. Blessed are you because you have believed. Mary is the woman of faith. When God is knocking on the door of humanity, Mary says yes and opens that door. The last beatitude of the gospel comes at the end of John's gospel where Jesus says to the doubting Thomas, blessed are you because you have seen and believe, but more blessed are those who believe without having seen. That's our beatitude, another beatitude of faith, blessedness that comes from having the eyes of faith that allows us to see God's presence among us. At Christmas time, we put up the manger, the creche. It's our way of opening the family album and looking at the baby pictures. In the first advent, of course, Mary is pregnant. She goes to help Elizabeth. She goes with haste because mercy is always urgent. She goes to help her cousin who is in difficulty. During that first advent, we see Mary preparing for Christmas by looking after other people in need. In the first advent, we see Mary and Joseph at Bethlehem searching for housing. Half a million people in our country are homeless. But Mary and Joseph at Bethlehem were looking for a safe place for Jesus to be born. In Ireland, during the time of the persecution, when the mass was forbidden, the Irish people would put a candle in the window which meant it was safe for a renegade priest to come and celebrate mass there in their homes. And at Christmas, they still have that custom of putting the candle in the window. The Hispanic people in our own congregation here at the cathedral in these days of Advent celebrate the posada, which is something akin to caroling because you go from house to house, but it's reliving that search for a place for the Christ child to be born. And the hymns that they sing are a dialogue between the people inside the house and those carrying the statues of Mary and Joseph looking for the inn. And the words of the hymns are always like, well, you know, we're looking for a place to stay and the people inside sing back. There's no room, go away, leave us alone, don't bother us. And then the people outside sing, 
but uh, this is Mary and Joseph, and we need a place for Jesus to be born. And then the people inside sing back, well, why didn't you say so? Come on in. They invite them in and have a party. It's about changing the history. It's about making room in the inn now. And our Advent needs to be about changing history, about responding to the call of John the Baptist to be converted in our own hearts, to be blessed by our faith and have that vision of seeing the world through God's eyes. And then making room in the inn of our heart, allowing faith to grow in our hearts, making time and space for God by putting Jesus at the top of our Christmas list. Jesus is the great gift. We must give ourselves in return. We have listened to God's word and reflected upon it. Let us now make our response by praying together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. My dear friends, let us confidently make known our needs to our Heavenly Father, who always hears our prayer with tenderness and love. For all believers, that we, like Mary, may believe that God will do great things in and through our ordinariness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of joy, that we may be grateful for all the gifts and opportunities that God offers us and rejoice in the blessings which come to us each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For new parents and expectant parents, that God will bless their children with health and help them to care for and nurture their children both physically and spiritually, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children who are at risk who have run away, who are in institutional settings, or who have been trafficked, that God will guide them to someone whom they can trust and bring them to safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For anyone experiencing fear, anxiety, or depression, that the birth of Christ may bring light into their lives and freedom to their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are injured, our lost homes, our businesses, and the recent tornadoes, that God will heal their wounds, 
keep them safe from further harm, and help them across access the resources that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially our families and friends who have recently died, and for Anne Evelyn Flattery, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may live in the light and peace of God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer all of our prayers confidently through the intercession of Mary of Nazareth, the woman of Advent, as together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice that you make. Praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make it holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Anne Flaherty, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Corpus et sanguis Christi custodiant me in vita eternum.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.